Hey guys, and welcome to today's webinar, Maximize Your Contents Reach, five things to do after you hit publish. My name is Claire Trevian, and I'm the head of content marketing at Passel. And in today's webinar, I'm going to show you how I managed to extend the reach of this particular report by transforming it in a variety of ways and sharing it effectively. All right, let's go. I thought the easiest thing to describe ways of extending the reach of a piece of content is to pick one particular piece of content as an example. So here, for instance, is a legal industry content marketing report that we've put together at PASL. So this is based on research that we've done on the top 100 UK law firms and their content marketing habits. And it's uh, an eight page document which sits on a gated page and um, people just put in their details and they get the PDF of it. They can also request a personalized report where they're benchmarked um, against the, the top 100 UK law firms. Okay, so that's, you know, very good, but there's not much point in it if nobody knows where to find it. So number one, of course, is to distribute it far and wide. So one way of doing that, of course, are social media updates, but I'm not talking about just, you know, creating one tweet and then never tweeting about it ever again. Use all of the social media networks that you have at your disposal with your company, but also encourage your employees to share it. So um, if you have a sales team, for instance, you should be encouraging them to share it as part of um, a social selling strategy. Um, and then, of course, you should also schedule these updates so that you can reshare them in the future automatically without thinking about it. There are apps such as HipPlay, uh, which allow you to do that. You can just identify content as evergreen and then it will keep on adding itself to your social media queue. So that's a really good way of doing it. Um, and then, of course, you know, add important hero pieces of content like this to your email signatures and also link them. Um, on your main website so that when people are landing on your front page, they can get to it. Just basically take every opportunity you can to make sure that the right people are going to be seeing your piece of content. Now, here are just um, five examples of tweets um, that I wrote uh, to share this report. Um, the reason why I'm sharing it is just to sort of encourage you to think a little bit more creatively when you're sharing your content. A lot of the time, particularly with law firms, when I see tweets come out, they're very, um, how to put it politely, very dull. Um, <laughs> it's often just the title and a link, um, but you have other tools at your disposal. So for instance, hashtags, try and use topical and relevant hashtags that other people in your industry are using. Uh, this means that you've got a bigger chance of being noticed. This is particularly the case with Twitter, but also with Facebook and now LinkedIn actually, and Instagram. And when it comes to things like YouTube, you know, there are tags as well. So whatever you're creating really, tags are pretty crucial. So here um, they've got different versions of each other and some are shorter than others, which means you can attach, you know, different images or GIFs or videos, whatever is relevant. The other thing I wanted to talk about is making sure that your updates are suited to each different type of network. So don't just do that thing that people do sometimes where they link their Twitter and their Facebook so that their tweets appear as Facebook statuses. That always looks really shoddy because it's not speaking the language of Facebook. So here are two different types of uh, Facebook uh, shares. So in the first I shared the link and so it comes up with a little e image preview. And then in the second case, I shared an image rather than a link. That was what I prioritized. You've always got a bit of a decision to make with Facebook um, statuses. And the infogra infographic performed a little bit better than the link in this case, but I wouldn't have known that without trying out both. So it's worth experimenting. And you know, social media often has a very short attention span, so don't worry about repeating the same stuff, as in don't worry about sharing the same content fairly regularly, um, because it just means that people are more able to see it. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk about is duplicating content. 
I mean, this is particularly the case if you've written a blog, for instance. Don't limit yourself to just having it on that blog. You can share an extract maybe from it um, on LinkedIn polls, Facebook notes, Medium with a little read more and link back to your website. It's important that it always links back to your website. That's the real key thing. Um, so here's an example of a LinkedIn Pulse post and on the right uh, medium. And so they're exactly the same, both sharing a slide share at the bottom, same text, but it just means that it's got a bigger chance of reading, of reaching a different audience this way. Um, because you might know people on medium that you're not connected to on LinkedIn Pulse and vice versa. Now, the other thing you could do is use Passel. So with Passel, you can select an extract from an article, then you press the Passel button, add brief commentary, and it becomes a sort of micro blog, as it were, which is um, very good for larger pieces. So for instance, here, that's the little bookmarklet that's appeared there. I've highlighted the text, um, and then I've added a little bit of a commentary, and that is the final result. It's a little Passel post uh, with some selected tweets. So again, I'm sort of extending um, my reach because I'm able to also thank the people that I've written to afterwards. Okay, uh, the next thing um, you should think about is building your newsletter. Now, email marketing might seem a little bit old hat to some, but it's still an incredibly powerful um, mode of communicating. So here again is where Passel can be useful because there's a newsletter tool which just basically pulls together all your most recent posts. So you can add author names, you can also filter it by tag, and it comes up, as you'll see, with all your posts. You just add, you know, a header image and an introduction. Uh, there you go. Um, you can also do an internal one with all the social media links. So that's really great for encouraging your colleagues to share the content that your team has created. And there's also a LinkedIn Pulse option just to make it a little bit easier here where you can select all the text, just go to LinkedIn Pulse and copy and paste it, basically. And we've definitely noticed that when we send out those newsletters for our company blog, we do get like proper peaks of um, of traffic you're definitely not just getting you know the hits and the clicks but they're also the right clicks especially if you've nurtured uh, a really focused mailing list then it's a lot more valuable often than throwing it out in media for clickbait you know okay number four recycle your content into other formats what do I mean by that? So you could transform your blog into, for instance, an infographic or a podcast or a video or a slide share, so on and so forth. So with the report, for instance, I transformed it into an infographic here. Um, this is a webinar where I discussed with a colleague the key findings. And that's a slide share where we basically transformed that infographic into a couple of slides. Um, and this was all made incredibly easy thanks to a tool called Canva and I'll put a link to that below this video if you want to check it out. And then finally, last but not least, update and republish uh, your content. Very important. So it's wonderful to create really timely um, content that comments on breaking news and so forth. But if you can also create what is called evergreen content, then that will give you a lot of extra value because it will just keep on being relevant and you can help it to keep being relevant by checking back on it and updating it and, and resharing it again. So keep an eye on that in your analytics, which posts are still performing well. That's because they obviously still hold an interest with people. So it's worth making sure that they're always going to be just right. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was useful. Please subscribe to our channel for more tips for B2B marketing. Thank you.